Taking a look at uh, worksheet number seven, question number three, which is the first of two questions that we had for homework last night. It says, repeat question one, B above, but with the third charge below the second charge. All I've done is effectively drawn the diagram as it's supposed to be drawn there that represents the situation. I haven't drawn the free body diagram showing the forces. We'll do that together. Okay, in this question, we wanted to find the net force on the second charge, charge two. So we've got to look at the force of one on two, and we've got to look at the force of three on two. Let's look at one on two first. Pretend three doesn't exist. For now, at least, pretend three doesn't exist. Do one and two attract each other, or do one and two repel each other? Right? They're going to repel each other. How come? Because they're both positive. Good. We've got positive five and positive five. That's uh, like charges. They're going to repel each other. One is going to go to the left as a result of that repulsion, although I don't really care about that because I'm not looking for the force on number one. Uh, number two is going to go to the right as a, force, as a result of that repulsion. So let's draw that. Let's say F12 is to the right. Now, what about 3 on 2? 3 is negative, 2 is positive. Are they going to attract or repel, Laura? Right, and if they attract, 2 is going to go which way, Isaac? If they attract, is it going to go towards number 3 or away from number 3? Towards it. So we're going to draw the force of 3 on 2 down this way. Now, this isn't a vector diagram, is it? Vector diagrams, the vectors have to be drawn head to tail or front to back, and that's not the case here. That's okay. okay? We're going to find the values of F12 and F32. In fact, we already have done that in previous question. We've already found the value of F12, K, Q1, Q2, over 0 0.025 meters squared. When we do that, we get a value for F12 of 3.596 times 10 to the 4 newtons. Now, F32, we're going to find the same way. Let's make sure you convert that to meters, 0 0.02 meters. And we get a value for F32 of 2.8094 times 10 to the 4 newtons. Now, we just had a similar question of this in physics 20 um, just today. Although it wasn't electric forces, of course, it was... Um, adding other vectors together. But that's in effect what we're doing here, right, is adding these two vectors together. Here's what a few people did in physics 20. They took the value of the first one, like this, and then added it to this one. So in other words, 3 plus 2 is 5. Right? They got this far, or the equivalent of this far, in the context of the question that they were doing, and then just said 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. What's wrong with that? Why can we not just say 3.5 plus 2.8 is, what, 6.3 or whatever it works out to be. Yep. Yeah, the directions are in different dimensions. That's, that's assuming they're scalars. If we want to find the distance, 2 plus 3, it's 5. But if we want to find the displacement, 2 plus 3, right, a vector quantity, assuming they're at right angles to each other, then we can't just do that. So we've got to draw a vector diagram here. We're going to say F12 is to the right, 3.596 times 10 to the 4. And we're going to say F32 is down, that's 2.8094 times 10 to the 4. And the resultant vector is going to be drawn from start to finish here. That's what we're looking for, right? R is equal to the square root of 3.5 plus squared plus 2.8 squared. And when we do that, we end up getting 4.56 times 10 to the 4 newtons. Theta, we're not going to express this as a south of east thing because we're not told that north, south, east, west is our frame of reference. We're just going to calculate the angle and say the angle that I have labeled ends up being 38 degrees. So it comes from the inverse tan function of 2.8 over 3.5 something, giving me a theta of 38.0 degrees. Again, just label it like that. Does that make sense? Now, quick question for you. We won't do this, but uh, somebody was asking me about this yesterday. I thought it was a good question. What if we were asked to solve for the net force on number one instead of number two? It becomes trickier, doesn't it? We'd, we'd go through the same process. We'd draw that free body diagram. Number two is repelled. Sorry, number two repels number one. We call that F21, the force of two on one. 
but then 3 attracts number 1, so we'd have a force down here, F31. Right? Well, how do you add those together? You know how to add those together. What would, you, what would you have to do? Martin, what would you have to do? Oh, I thought, sorry, I thought your hand was going up there. Yeah, you, you, you could absolutely find the distance between 1 and 3. Okay, and you'd have to find that funny angle as well, right? Using uh, probably tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So get that angle, and then you'd get rid of that funny angle off to the side over here, right? And then you'd combine x's and y's, right? You'd say the total x component is this plus this. Right? Those are my two x components. The y component would just simply be this, and then we'd read raw it and solve for it. Does that make sense? We won't go through one of those. I don't think you're going to see one of those. It is, it's possible. It's conceivable. Um, but you're set up to the point where you have a fighting chance on it now. Basically, basically, it turns into a physics 20 question, right? Remember those physics 20 questions where you had one on a unit test? I know you had this on the unit test because I'm giving the physics 20 unit test on kinematics Wednesday of next week, and I was just looking at it this morning. Um, uh, I think it said uh, Mr. Cadera is chasing Mr. Dickey or Mr. Dickey is chasing Mr. Cadera or something like that. Do you remember that question? Um, whosoever class you were in, I think you got that one. Um, you go this way, and then you go 30 degrees south of west or whatever, and what's the displacement? It's the exact same question, right? Once we find these forces using kq1, q2 over r squared, it's the exact same question. So you just get the x components, combine them, get the y components, combine them, and do your thing. I don't think you'll see something like that on an exam. The reason being is because um, that's quite a bit of work. That's quite a bit of work. But I will say you do have six hours now, right? Uh, and they, they have said, they have said that they're not going to make the exam any harder or any longer than it was before. All right, if you're good with those, then I want to take a look at a little special bonus question for the day here. I'm going to give you a handout here. I'll ask you to take one of these, hand it on to the next person. When you get it, I want you to answer the first question and then take a second to see if you could have a fighting chance at answering the second question. But I'm not going to give you, because of the amount of time we have left in class, much time to work on that. We'll just go over it together uh, pretty quickly. But give it a whirl when you see it. At least get the first question answered and at least take a look at that second question. Okay, let's have a look here. Um, it says we've got two identical conducting balls, B1 and B2, each of mass 25 grams. They're hanging on a 50 centimeter long insulated threads. They become equally charged, equally charged, and come to rest with angles of deviation of 45 degrees from the vertical. And you can see that all labeled in the diagram. And then it says the electrostatic force between the charged balls can best be described as what? Is it going to be attraction or repulsion? It's got to be repulsion, right? It has to be repulsion, otherwise these things aren't going to stay spread apart. So it's either going to be B or D. Is it repulsion due to dissimilar charges or similar charges? What does similar mean? Like charges? Dissimilar mean would, would mean opposite charges, unlike charges, right? Um, the opposite of similar. Um, listen, we know what this is because we're told in the question that it says they become equally charged. So we know it's like charges, but even if it didn't say that, we'd know they were like charges because they're repelling each other. So the answer has got to be uh, D here, repulsion due to similar charges. Now, that one wasn't so bad. This one, the tension in the thread, this is the ugly one. I remember the first time I saw a question like this, I remember thinking, holy cow, what do I do? I remember trying to do F is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R squared, but I don't know what the charges are. I don't know what the distance is, although I could find the distance, I suppose. Um, I was at a little bit of a loss. Honestly, I was at a little bit of a loss. What happens 
When I get at a little bit of a loss is I start trying things, not random things. I don't just start trying like, oh, V equals D over T, that'll work. Okay? It won't. Don't try random things, but try relevant things. Okay? At, at one point, I remember on this question thinking, well, let's just, let's just try to figure out what other forces are going on here. Okay? If I want to find the force of tension, let's figure out other forces going on here. Well, we know that we have tension acting this way. We know that we have gravity acting this way. Actually, let's label that in a different color here. Gravity is acting downwards. And we know that we have the repulsive force caused by number one. We'll call it the electric force acting to the right. And as soon as I drew that, that's when it occurred to me. I didn't have a plan. I didn't know how I was going to do this. But when I saw that diagram in front of me after I drew it, the light bulb turned on. Just one second here, guys. It occurred to me that this is an equilibrium. So the forces must balance. That must mean there's a force to the right, there's a force to the left. What force acts to the left? The x component of the tension, which has to be equal to the electric force. It's not the electric force, right? But it's equal to the electric force. And the y component of that tension, in order to balance out gravity, has to be equal to gravity. Does that make sense? All right. I've got the angle right here is 45 degrees. I know what gravity is. It's m times g. So if I know what m times g is, and I know the angle, then I could say cosine 45 degrees is equal to the force of gravity over the tension. Does that make sense? And we find the tension that way. So in a way that I would have never even thought of the first time I saw this question, that is, without just trying something. I tried something without knowing where it was going to lead, and guess what? It led to a light bulb turning on in my brain that, that ended up giving me the correct answer. Uh, I, I believe it was, yes. I believe the answer is C.